Fellow gamers, fellow deskers, Dr. Schwartz here for the Wellness Blog, and today we're going over simple setup at our computer. Let's get into it. All right, monitor height. So our monitor should be at eye level, and our eye level should be at that upper one third, one half of the screen, right? We want our eyes to do the least amount of work as possible. And we accomplish that by having where we do most of our work, upper one third, upper one half, at eye level. So raise your monitor, whether it's on a monitor arm, or um, you can put some books underneath it, or you can put whatever underneath it, right? We want to make sure that eye level is at the upper one third, upper one half of the screen where we're doing most of our work. Seems simple, but I think a lot of people overlook that because that's what's going to cause headaches if we're looking down all the time or looking up all the time. And even if it's a little bit, that adds up because those muscles are in that position for so long. It's, you know, two, three hours. Sometimes it's an eight hour day that we're working there, not taking a break, which shouldn't happen. But um, if you are working eight hours a day, that adds up. That muscle has to hold that position of your head for that long. Just think about that. If I told you to hold your hand like this for eight hours, taking minimal breaks, you'd be like, uh, no thanks. Well, your muscles are saying, uh, no thanks too, because it, it's just a long period of time that, that muscle ha these muscles have to hold that position. So think about that. You know, at the end of the day, if you're getting headaches, if you're um, getting neck tightness, if you feel kind of stretched in your shoulders or up near your ears, right? That's from monitor height. Another thing that can contribute to that is monitor placement. So we want our primary screen to be at right in front of us. We don't want to do the split screen right through here because we're looking here and we're looking here, right? If we have a primary monitor and we're using the primary monitor specifically and the secondary monitor every you know couple minutes, we want that to be the side. We want our primary monitor to be, once again, so the muscles in our neck don't have to work that hard because we want these muscles to not <laughs> have to put in a ton of work. We want these suckers to be lazy, right? And the less we can strain these muscles, the better it is for you both in short term and long term. Next, resting the elbows on a surface. I'm a huge proponent of this as far as, you know, if the desk is doing that work, if your armrests are able to do that work, that's great, right? But if the armrest can't, all the way down, try and scoot that chair underneath and have those uh, forearms and those wrists supported by the desk. That's what it's there for, right? Now, a lot of times, if you have bony elbows like me, looking like Skeletor, we want to make sure that we have those supported on structures that are, are, are conducive to our health. And one of the things that I use is a little gel pad like this. It looks terrible. It's, it was super cheap on Amazon. It was like five, ten bucks. Um, and my left elbow seems to always get a little sore. So I always use that gel pad to kind of brace and, and kind of cushion the bony part of my elbow. And that seems to help out tremendously. So um, if you need to use those, use those. It's whatever works best for you, right? But we always want the forearms and those wrists to be as horizontal as possible when we're doing this, right? We're causing pinch points through here. We're also extending, putting strain on the musculature of the flexors of the forearm and the wrist through here, right? So we want a horizontal, not causing any pinch points from the table. Next, we're going to look at chair tilt. Now, when you, I say chair tilt, I mean smooth, right? All right, so we don't want the old adage of 90 degrees straight up sitting like this. This is absolutely terrible for the structures of the low back. Um, all the upper torso weight, head, everything is getting loaded at a significantly higher force than if we actually offload it to about 100, 110. Now, it doesn't seem like a significant amount, right? But when we offload those structures, the discs and the vertebrae, everything in there is less strained throughout the day. And as we learned before, the less strain we can put on tissues, the better it's going to be for both short-term pain and long-term detrimental effects. So once again, just tilting it back a little bit, 100, 110. I don't need you to get a protractor out and your slide rule out to figure out that you know this is going to be beneficial for your back. Now, pinch points in the knees are also a big thing behind the knees. So we want angles, you know, 90 or greater here, 90 or greater here, right? We don't want to have um, the hip flexors, which commonly get really tight as we sit all day. We want these to be, these heaps to be, op hips <laughs> to be opened up coming through here. Um, and we don't want pinch points in the back here. We want our chair to be able to be adjustable, whether you're a taller person, shorter person, you want these, your feet to be flat, 
right, as, as much as possible. But we also don't want these pinch points to occur because that can cause um, you know, neurological type symptoms. It can cause uh, blood flow issues. It can cause just general strain and, and pain on the musculature and the hamstrings. Um, in our body. So we want to make sure that we, once again, don't have straight on tissues. Uh, and the last one, feet flat as possible. So we're rolling in here. Right. So when I say feet flat as possible, we want them to be flat on the floor, right? And obviously all day we're not going to be able to do that. We're going to want to tuck a leg underneath. We're going to want to cross our legs every once in a while. And that's fine in small doses, right? Because we want to encourage dynamic sitting. We want to encourage um, movement throughout the day. So even while we're sitting, we can encourage movement, whether it's switching feet positions or, you know, chair positions or leaning back a little bit or unlocking the chair and kind of rocking back a little bit. Anything to promote movement is great, and that's what we want. But we we do want the vast majority of our day to be flat-footed on the floor. Um, that's a lot of alliteration. That's pretty good. Uh, <laughs> well, we, we want that to occur because that's the most ergonomic kind of centric focus for sitting and that's what you want obviously um but even throughout the day taking breaks is crucial too so every half hour 45 minutes even hours kind of pushing it a little bit but get up move walk around um go get a drink of water if you're working from home it's kind of hard to chop it up at the water cooler but you know you can chop it up with the dog at the at the fridge while you're filling up or whatever but go down the stairs get a healthy snack um check your phone book you know Look outside, if, it, if you got some green space out there, get some sunshine, kind of move, right? Moving, as I always say, you know, moving is magic. Moving makes you feel better, and it's going to make you more productive, too, because the more you move and the more we can get actual, the blood flow into the brain is, is legit. We, when we encourage movement, we encourage the mind to work better. We have better blood flow to the frontal cortex, better decision-making, everything under the sun you can think of, you know, movement works and so whether you're sitting moving varying positions whether you're taking a break move get moving synopsis what did we cover today in the video monitor height upper half upper one third eye level Mon primary monitor directly in front of you if you're using that as your primary monitor secondary should be off to the side a little bit but directly next to it we don't want it to be like way over here right resting the forearm and the wrist they should be horizontal they shouldn't be causing pinch points on the table they shouldn't be wrists extended, wrist flex, anything like this. We want to have as least strain as possible. Chair tilt, backrest tilt, we want that to be greater than 90, so 100, 110 degrees, offloading those tissues. That's what we want there. Pinch points from the seat pan. We want to make sure that we're not, this, our legs aren't shoved right up to the seat pan, and we also want to make sure the seat pan isn't pushing up on our hamstrings too. Decreasing pinch points, decreasing strain, help short-term and long-term as we discussed. And finally, keeping our feet flat on the floor as much as we can. Very in position while we sit throughout the day, taking breaks while we sit throughout the day, but the majority of it, we want our feet flat, hips opened up past 90, um, legs can be opened up past a little bit past 92 as far as the knees, but we, we want to make sure that we're not straining all day and straining tissues all day. And we do that by some of the suggestions we made today. So I hope that helped, whether you're gaming, whether you're working from home, editing, producing, playing Minesweeper, whatever. We want to make sure that we're um, putting this least strain on those tissues and being productive as possible, which will help our performance. So hope you enjoyed the video. More to come. We'll be covering some different topics coming up, so be excited for that. Uh, hope you guys like the new video series. Talk to you guys soon. Thanks.